The second design alternative gave concurrency but at the cost of exposing the business logic. And the third design alternative that I'm going to explain to you is going to correct that. It is using session bean with entity bean. The idea is that we're going to associate with each client session a session facade. It's a design pattern that allows you to construct a session and associate it with a particular client. So for instance, in this case, this session facade corresponds to servlet one, which corresponds to the client that it is serving. Similarly, this session facade serving client number two. And as in the first design, what you see is that the web container contains only the servlet and the presentation logic that is associated with that particular servlet. Now the business logic is moved back into the EJB container and it sits with the session facade and we still have the data access objects implemented using the entity bean concept that I mentioned in the second design alternative. So the session facade is worrying about all the data access needs of its associated business logic. Similarly, this session facade is worrying about all the data access needs of this business logic. And what the session facade is going to do is, it's going to form out the data access requests corresponding to the business logic associated with this session. So there's an opportunity again to exploit parallelism because you can form out parallel requests to multiple entity beans that are handling the data access to different portions of the database. And similar to the second design alternative, we're going to structure this database to be at whatever level of granularity that we think is the right one. So this entity bean may be responsible for an individual row or a cluster of rows and so on. And that way we can have the granularity that we want for parallel access so that the business logic can be served in parallel. And at the same time, we have moved the business logic back into the EJB container. So the business logic is not exposed outside the corporate network. And we have a couple of choices of how we want to structure the session bean with the entity bean. Now the web container is going to use RMI, or remote interface, in the distributed object framework of Java in order to communicate with the business logic. And the session facade is going to communicate with the entity bean either using RMI, in that case, the interaction between the session facade and the entity bean is very similar to the interaction between the servlet and the session facade. That is, it'll use RMI. Or we can choose to construct the interface between the session facade and the entity bean using local interfaces. And the reason why we may want to choose one or the other, using the RMI allows us to sort of keep this entity bean wherever we want in the network. On the other hand, if we choose the local option, what we are saying is that we will co-locate the entity beans in the same EJB container as the business logic and the session facade. The advantage of doing that is that because it is local, we don't have to incur network communication in order to go and fetch the data from the entity bean. The entity bean, of course, has to fetch it from the database servers, but once it fetches it from the database servers, it doesn't have to go through the network in order to give it to the business logic if we're using local interfaces. So that's another bifurcation within this design alternative. We can choose to construct this portion of the application using remote interface or local interface. And the pros of this structure is in some sense getting the best of both worlds. We are not exposing the business logic, which was the virtue of the first design alternative. And we are also getting concurrency through the data access object encoded as entity beans. So you get the concurrency and the fact that the business logic is within the corporate network. Both of those good features are available in the design alternative. Now, is that a con? Well, we are incurring additional network access in order to do the service that we want for the data access. And that can be mitigated by co-locating the entity bean and the session facade in the same EJB container. So that's a choice that you can make. So these are 
the three design alternatives that we talked about. One is a coarse grain session bean alternative. The second is a finer grained data access object alternative. And the third is sort of putting together the first two, putting the session bean as a facade to actually access the data access objects which are encoded in entity beans so that you can get concurrency. Notice that in talking about these different design alternatives, we are only talking about how to break up that application, the logic of that application, which consists of presentation to the client, business logic that has to do with decisions that this enterprise has to make in order to service this request, and database access in order to get the data that is needed in order to do the work that is involved in serving up the needs of a particular client. There are lots of things that are needed in addition to worrying about the application logic itself. And those are things like security, persistence, and so on. The power of object technology is the fact that those are things that may be common across different instances of applications. So we can reuse all of them from one application to the other. We don't have to reinvent it for every application. That's the power of the object technology. So that's the thing that I wanted to start with, and I wanted to give you the different design alternatives that exist in structuring these complex services using the object technology to reuse components in structuring complex applications.